The more you look into news about robots, the more Terminator starts looking like a documentary. And here's why. China stamping out humanoid robots as if it's planning to colonize space. OpenAI created a separate division to defend against artificial intelligence. Meanwhile, Altman's having a laugh about Elon Musk's language model Grok. And cherry on top, the Pentagon has a new AI strategy to streamline decision making. I'm Nick, let's get down to business. OpenAI has created a division to analyze potential defense mechanisms against catastrophic risks posed by generative artificial intelligence. Among the goals of the Preparedness Project, which will be led by Alexander Modry, director of MIT's Center for Deployable Machine Learning, is to track, predict, and protect against the dangers posed by today's AI systems. Specifically, open AI engineers fear AI's amazing gift of persuasion, generated malware on top of the standard threats to humanity, chemical, biological, and nuclear. To give this division a fast track, Sam Altman's company has also set up a contest for the so-called best threat, where the prize is 25 big ones or a job at OpenAI. The goal is to understand what terrible things can be created using advanced generative AI systems. Any ideas? If you're in a doom and gloom mode, that's perfect. Leave your comment and let's see if we can outsmart this division, David Goggins style. Altman didn't stop there. He announced a new update including customization of the GPT chatbot. Meanwhile, GPT-4 Turbo, which has been trained on information through April 2023, exists in two versions, one designed solely for analyzing text and a second version understanding the context of both text and images. According to Altman, both models will become publicly available in the coming weeks. The GPT-4 Turbo model has a large context window of 128K input tokens, which the company says equates to 300 plus pages of text in a single prompt. In addition, the model has become three times cheaper for developers due to the reduced costs of input and output of a single token. At the same time, Elon Musk launched his own language model, Grok, which he intends to integrate into Tesla. The chatbot uses posts from Social Network X, also owned by Musk, as one of its data sources. Grok, modeled after a guidebook from Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy, promises to respond to users with humor. So far, it's been opened up to select X users and one of them is apparently Sam Altman. Having tested the neural network, Altman posted a screenshot of its responses to X, calling Grok's humor grandfatherly and hinting that it would be easier to train it using, surprise, surprise, GPT. At the same time, XAI claims that their chatbot has been tested to determine the level of math and logic ability compared to current Llama 270B, Inflection 1, GPT 3.5, GPT 4, Palm 2, and Claude 2 models. It's reported, quote, Grok outperformed all models except for GPT 4. Whether this is true or not, we'll find out later. We think that here we can discount Musk's habit to consider the future to have arrived already. For example, he calls FSD an autopilot. Nevertheless, among the design features of the Grok model is the fact that it receives information in real time and is not afraid to talk about taboo topics for other chatbots. Can't wait to see it in action talk about action, Dell Complex decided to create a separate state with artificial intelligence on a ship. The idea is to send a ship with 10,000 NVIDIA graphics cards on board to the ocean and deploy its AI power there. Since the ship will be located exclusively in neutral waters, it will not be restricted by government treaties. For autonomous operation, the ship will have autonomous power sources including solar panels to power the AI and armed guards. The company says the project will cost at $600 million and that it will cooperate with various countries as a part of it. What exactly is meant by cooperation and why it's needed at all is not really specified. If you got any clues or an inside scoop, hit us up. 
Meanwhile, China intends to become the world's leader in the production and use of humanoid robots as early as 2025. This was announced by the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology of the People's Republic of China. The country already has plans to build several large-scale production facilities as well as a network of specialized small and medium-sized enterprises. Also. On the books are a few cluster zones for industrial development, which will be deeply integrated into the real economy, becoming a new important engine of economic growth. What this means is that the new enterprises will become city-forming enterprises. The whole point is that according to the Chinese government, humanoids are likely to be another breakthrough technology, similar to computers or smartphones, that will change the way we live and work, and all of this by 2027. In particular, robots will be involved in industries such as healthcare, domestic services, agriculture, logistics, and heavy manufacturing. China is increasing the robotization of manufacturing and other areas every year and aiming to reach a rate of at least 500 robots per 10,000 workers by 2025. To see how robots are built in China for a variety of needs, check out our other video in the description. And once you get through that, check out a video of China's plans to build a base on the moon. The presentation titled China's Lunar Space Station and Lava Cave Lunar Base Development Plan was posted on YouTube by user Chen Jun Lon, so the authenticity of this is yet to be confirmed. But up until now, any details of the Chinese National Space Administration's program were kept under wraps. In the video, you can see a modular space station in orbit and a robotic mission to explore the surface to find a suitable location for a base and, you know, look around. There's also descent modules, greenhouses for food, power plants, and of course, manned missions to explore the moon. It should be noted that the Chinese platform will be placed in an equatorial orbit, not a halo orbit like NASA's Gateway. The platform will also be used, judging from the video, as a starting point for building an underground base in the lava caves of our satellite. The video shows the main module of the base, including inflatable housing greenhouses and research labs being lowered into one such cave from the orbital platform. On the surface around the exit from the lava cave, robots print a protective dome with an airlock. Then a solar power station and other buildings are erected. Radio antennas, a garage for lunar rovers, a landing pad for a descent module. At the end of the video, viewers are shown how the Taikonauts will live and work on such a base. Sounds pretty far out there, does it not? I'll go you one further. Did you know that China has their own SpaceX called iSpace? So what do they do? Well, this private company has recently completed successful tests of a reusable rocket. The first stage of the Hyperbola rocket reached a height of almost 600 feet, which is 178 meters, and then demonstrated a controlled descent and landing with an accuracy of just shy of 6 feet, which is 1.7 meters. Hyperbola 2 is a two-stage rocket powered by methane and liquid oxygen. It has a total length of 90 feet, 28 meters, and a payload capacity of 4,188 pounds, or 1.9 tons. Now the company will start building a larger reusable rocket, Hyperbola 3, 226 feet or 69 meters high, which will essentially be the Chinese equivalent of SpaceX's Falcon 9. And since we're back to Musk, the South African Iron Man apparently put his charm to work in FDA offices and managed to get permission from the agency to implant his chips into 11 patients at once. While the standard procedure implies that a new chip is implanted into one patient who is then monitored for a year. Ideally, Neuralink implants should restore the ability to speak and move. Now, having received approval for human trials, Musk's company will operate on 11 patients at once in 2024. The cost of each operation is estimated to stand in $10,500, but insurance companies will have to shell out $40,000 per patient. Neuralink has yet to compromise work on the chip. There are plans to increase its runtime on a single charge in the future. The company also has plans to create a chip for the spinal cord. So the implant for the brain will be used to restore the ability to communicate with the outside world and control bionic prostheses. 
and the spinal cord implant will restore mobility to the patient's own limbs. The startup has already received applications from thousands of patients, but by next year, 11 volunteers will be selected for the first phase of the experiment. My only question is, how do you apply if you can't speak or move? That wasn't a serious question. What is serious, though, is Microsoft Asia. Together with Beijing and Xi'an University, researchers have developed a method that allows large language models like GPT to learn from their own mistakes, similar to humans. The learning from mistakes strategy, LIMA for short, involves creating erroneous problem-solving paths, correcting them with GPT-4, and then training the original models on the corrected data. Experiments have proven that this approach significantly improves the ability of AI models to reason and, in particular, to solve math problems. Lima has proven that in certain cases, machine learning processes can be tailored to resemble human learning. Potentially, this approach could lead to a new breakthrough in AI for healthcare, finance, autonomous vehicles, and who can even fathom what else? Meanwhile, on the other side of the pond, the Pentagon has learned from their mistakes and updated their military strategy for implementing artificial intelligence. The new approach includes improving data, collaborating with outside groups, and using AI to analyze forces and counter cyber threats. The goal is to improve decision-making on the battlefield. However, it also emphasizes the potential dangers of AI in autonomous weapons. What is the essence of the new document in layman's terms? So basically, they say, we need to develop infrastructure to improve datasets. Then the military needs to collaborate more with developers outside of the Department of Defense. Thirdly, we need to remove bureaucracy and other obstacles that prevent the military from implementing advanced technologies. Ultimately, the Pentagon wants to get the most complete and detailed analysis of forces on the battlefield using AI, taking into account all data, including classified stuff. The document also mentions strategic competitions with China, which the U.S. could potentially have some tensions with in regions such as the Taiwan Strait and the South China Sea. And when we talk tensions, U.S. Marines come to mind. What these gentlemen have decided to do recently is what you'd expect them to do. Mount a grenade launcher on a robot dog. Remember that YouTube video with a regular gun on a robot dog? Well, that don't cut it no more, okay? They've already exhibited that at the Army 2022 form. Even the robot model used was the same, Go from Unitree. Captain Obvious from the ranks of the Marines told the media that the robot is not suitable for real combat, however, because it's too light, fragile, and its charge is not enough for a real mission. The only conclusion that can be drawn from this is that the military is going in circles around the ideas of arming four-legged robots. And Boston Dynamics spot, where would we be without it? It's saving lives. In the US, it entered a bus where an armed man was found sleeping. Spot woke up the suspicious citizen and prepared him for the arrival of police officers, making their mission safer. Now in Japan, Spot is seriously helping with the decommissioning process of the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Despite the fact that more than 10 years have passed since the disaster, much of the area is still unexplored and extremely dangerous for humans. The robot is yet to be affected by the radiation. That's why Robot Dog turned out to be an invaluable asset for the team tasked with this work. It can go where neither wheeled nor tracked robot can, and thanks to its arm, the robot can collect samples, take swabs, pick up small debris, and open doors 10 to 20 times faster than any other. The robot was also able to examine radiation levels and record videos of all the rooms, including those that haven't been opened since the disaster. The operators guided the robot, but all they had to do was set the direction the robot should go in. Spot seems to be doing a great job with such an important and dangerous mission. What do you think? Leave your comments below. On to virtual worlds now. Mark Zuckerberg and Lex Friedman have had a chat in the metaverse. The goal was to show how avatars from Zuck have progressed over the last year, but it turned out to be a bit ambiguous. 
On the one hand, the avatars turned out to be incredibly realistic, completely breaking the idea of remote presence. On the other hand, Mark and Lex are two of the most unemotional people in the world. Not for nothing, Zuckerberg is often classified as a reptile. Few have seen human emotions on his face. So in the experiment, despite the fact that both interviewees spent several hours in the studio where they tried to portray various emotions on camera, in the end, in the meta-universe, effect of emotional involvement was at a minimum. Friedman didn't miss the point and emphasized that the problem was with them, not the technology. Zuckerberg, for his part, noted that his company is now working on the speed with which these realistic avatars are created, literally in a couple of swipes with a smartphone camera in front of the user's face. And finally, Fluid Reality has introduced a high-resolution haptic VR glove that doesn't need to be connected to any other devices or structures. It works by itself and is completely wireless, lightweight and self-contained. Each glove is equipped with 160 dynamic actuators with haptic feedback. These are designed to allow you to feel objects and surfaces accurately and vividly with every fingertip in VR. For example, when playing a virtual violin, you will feel every single string of the instrument. Such sensitivity is realized with the help of bubbles pixels or bubble pixels, which are filled with liquid with the help of electric micropumps. The pumps have no moving parts and work on the principle of electroosmosis, attracting a charge within the liquid and causing it to flow. Difference in the pressure of the pixels on your fingertips is what gives you the sensation of objects and even textures in VR. By the way, we talked about the most advanced gadgets for the meta-universe in a separate video. We'll leave the link for it in the description below. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, and share it. Also, check out our Telegram for more high-tech news. Until then, see ya and bye-bye.